Hey Tom, awesome video as always. I'm not a fan of these or jumping spiders just for the simple reason that the people who keep them tend to be overwhelmingly obnoxious. Maple plushie, still available, limited edition. Check it out, link is down below. Today, we are gonna have a conversation about velvet spiders. Possibly my favorite kind of spider. It's really hard to choose a favorite because I have a lot of favorites. If you've been here a while, you already know that. But velvet spiders, they always hold a special place. They were impossible to get. Like when I wanted one the most, they were just like impossible, nowhere to be found. And the only reason why I ever got one was because Tom Patterson surprised me with one of his own personal ones, which is Miss Wendy. Wednesday, probably my most famous spider. And now we have a bunch of Wednesday babies because I was very fortunate to have a successful breeding with her. So I figured today we could go ahead and feed her babies. I can give you guys an update on them and also an update on her because I do have, I think, some news. I think I, I think something's going on in here. I also wanted to have a conversation about Tom Moran's recent YouTube video and podcast kind of highlighting the velvet spiders, specifically the irises, which Wednesday is a Gandana minnow. I wanted to just kind of like have a conversation about it because he put this out in that space and a lot of people have asked me my thoughts on it and whatever so I figured we could go ahead and get into that as well. So yeah let's go ahead and start off with Miss Wednesday down here. I wanted to just give you a little heads up about what I think might be going on. All right so go ahead and get a good look. <laughs> it's a little difficult to see but you see those two little lines right there. Those are her little paws and to me it looks like she is on her third egg sac which is amazing. I'm so stoked to have more babies. What's really cool about the Gandana minnows is you can keep them together, which I have been, and oh my gosh, it has been so entertaining to have so many. Feeding them is an absolute riot. Like, literally, it's a riot. I need to show you guys. This is my little baby cart. I have lots of babies on this. My Hylus giganteus that I bred. We can go ahead and feed them too, but as you can see, they are certainly getting big. My velvet spider babies. These are the ones I bred these are the ones I didn't. I have had two Wednesday sacks so far. As you guys probably remember, the first sack was not as successful. I only got about maybe 10 babies. There was like something that went wrong. I ended up keeping four and sending three to my friend who provided the mail. She still has all three. I have actually lost two. One was very expected. I lost it early on. It never started eating. It was the one that it was missing a bunch of legs and just I knew that wasn't probably going to pull through. But the second one was a little surprising. So I had one grow a lot and then I had one grow like not at all. So this is the biggest of the two that I have. For how recently this one was born, look how large it is. Here's from the second sack. So look at the size difference. First sack, second sack. So yeah, that is a noticeably huge velvet spider. And then down here is its sibling. The sibling is quite large as well. Not as big, but pretty large. Let's give them some little fruit flies while we're doing this. Before these things start waking up, I've got to say this is my biggest pain. It might seem like a lot of fruit flies, but I'm okay with them eating a lot. Let's pop the lids off these guys. I'm pretty sure we each got about 15 velvet spiders out of the second sack. I have only had one loss out of all the babies that I've kept from the second sack, so that's great. I'm gonna get a lot of fruit flies. I always give them a ton. It's a mess, but you can see them all already starting to come out. There's fruit flies getting everywhere, of course. This is where the fun really is. They always end up fighting over some fruit flies and I don't understand why because I put so many in there. Like, look at that. That one just came and like, it's like, oh, you're eating that? And then this one's just attacking that one. Here comes another. This one's after a f its own fruit fly. Looks like we're good. There's always some drama. Here. Look, look. But look at how active they get when they know they're getting fed. Where are you going? Do you wanna come out? Oh, 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 there you go. <laughs> These ones haven't really come out yet. What are you guys doing? Hiding. I see them in there hiding. Oh, 
you got one. Oh, they're popping out on this side now. So yeah, that is how those babies are doing. So yeah, while these guys eat, I'm gonna pop these back in the fridge and I will feed the rest of these babies after the video. So we're gonna start off with this. So Tom Moran is a YouTuber. He doesn't like to be called that, but he is a YouTuber that has been around longer than me. He's been in this hobby for quite a long time. Somebody I would consider a friend. He's done collabs with me. His content has kind of changed over the past couple years, I've noticed. Now, Tom Moran, if you are watching this, I would love to do a podcast with you about this topic and several others. I have so many things I'd love to have a conversation with you about. I did write you, but I know you don't really use Facebook anymore, so. But yeah, I would love to have a conversation with Tom because he has a perspective that has a lot of opinions and views that conflict with mine and I think that that can really be productive to talk about. So Tom recently posted a video and a podcast about velvet spiders and them being a fad and like what it's attracting to the hobby and I feel like not wholly responsible for this because I will say TikTok has blown up. There's lots of short content that has to do with jumping spiders and velvet spiders also, but I will admit that I was one of the first YouTubers to really highlight jumping spiders and highlight velvet spiders. The first jumping spider I kept was in 2017. It's kind of what led to this whole channel and this whole hobby. Once that jumping spider died and I fell into tarantula YouTube, I said, well, I guess I'll try keeping a tarantula now. Since I couldn't find another jumping spider and I, I decided to move on to tarantulas from there and eventually circling back to the jumping spiders and then when I circled back to the jumping spiders things definitely like blew up and changed a lot because in 2017 when I did keep my first jumping spider there was like no jumping spider anything out there there was no jumping spider care guides there was no jumping spider accounts on Instagram that I, I knew of there's like nothing okay there was no jumping spider youtubers it was just kind of me and Google and guessing what to do but when I circled back to jumping spiders this little community started like kind of growing and growing and growing and growing and it's become into what it is and I do think that that has attracted a lot to the hobby and then as for velvet spiders you know velvet spiders were impossible to get impossible to get like 2017 18 19 I really just could not find any velvet spiders and it's funny because Frank Soma told me a long time ago he had imported velvet spiders and nobody cared he could not sell them I guess they stopped importing them and they were just like hard to find but after begging Tom Patterson who is not Tom Moran, at least a year, he eventually sent me Wednesday, probably to shut me up, but it caused a tidal wave of people wanting to buy velvet spiders from him. Let's talk a little bit about Tom's podcast and video. I've got to admit, I was pretty nervous when I saw that he had posted these because I was afraid he was gonna be like, I, I hate, hate these jumping, jumping spider, spider, velvet spider, spider people, people that are, are in this hobby, da, 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 da. and then I'm just kind of like, who would do that? Who is he talking about? I don't know, not me. So let's go ahead and crack into his podcast. Now this podcast actually came out in November 2023 and I remember watch it, listening to this. I was like shaking. I was so scared he was gonna say something mean about me. <laughs> so Iris's Wakanary Care and the Velvet Jumping Spider Fad is the title of this podcast. I'm gonna skip ahead and get into when he talks more about this fad. But I will say in his video and his podcast, he mentions that he didn't wanna make content about the velvet spider that Tom Patterson had surprised him with because it was a fad and also because he didn't ever keep them before, so he didn't wanna make a video on care of something he didn't keep. And he also said there wasn't a lot of information out there about their care, which I really disagree with because I've made a lot of videos. Now that he's kept this one for a while and raised it up, he decided to finally make a care guide and then he ended up like talking about this whole fad and what is attracting the hobby. And so let's just go ahead and get into this part of the podcast. We're gonna jump in about 26 minutes in. Uh, originally, I had reservations about getting one and we're gonna get into our listener or my, our viewer comment in a minute. And part of it was, it was due to the fact that it was just, a, it was a trendy spider. It was like everybody had that same thing with the, the jumping spiders. It's almost been ruined for me when I got my jumping spiders. Like, oh, these are fun. These are really cool. I've never raised these before. And I like love to look for jumping spiders around my house now. But then they became so popular and I get hit up at least two or three times a week. People thinking I'm Tom Patterson going, hey, can I get some jumping spiders? I saw them on this video and they're so cute and I want some and it just drives me nuts. <laughs> okay, leave Tom Moran alone. He's not Tom Patterson. Tom Moran, Tom Patterson. Not the same person. Commonly confused. And it was kind of the same thing with the Eurasia species. They became the it spider and I'm not one to jump on the trends. It's just, a, it's a defect in my way of thinking that if something's 
super popular. I, I want to raise awareness of something that's not popular that people are overlooking. I wouldn't avoid something for that reason, but I get it. There's so many awesome spiders that people are not keeping. I feel like Richard should make a video like top 10 spiders that are being overlooked, but I digress. So that's what kept me away from them. And now that I have this one, I get it. I get why people like them. I love the spider. I am getting more only because I enjoy them and I want to keep more of them. I want to grow more of them up. But this leads us to our comment that we got from on the video. And it's funny because in the video, I mentioned the fact that I wasn't very interested in them at first. And this person almost seemed to kind of pick up on that and run with it. So here is the comment. And this is from Charlotte. Hey, Tom, Awesome video as always. I'm not a fan of these or jumping spiders just for the simple reason that the people who keep them tend to be overwhelmingly obnoxious and anthropomorphized to the point of actually putting the animal in danger. Then attempt to carry these habits over to tarantulas. And by this, she's talking about excessive handling, inappropriate enclosures, overfeeding, and so, so many. My cutie is digging today. Has anyone seen this? Oh my God, my little darling is just so quirky post where the writer doesn't seem to recognize that shockingly, spiders are spiders. Not trying to be an elitist, I'm sure there are some good ones out there, but the influx of both jumping spiders and velvet spider keepers on TikTok and on Facebook groups has become extremely exhausting and honestly turned me off from keeping these completely. The anthropomorphization is somewhat more understandable with jumping spiders, as a few studies have shown that they do have a higher level of intelligence than we originally thought, and they are such visual animals who rely heavily on eyesight. Plus, those big eyes really are adorable. But carrying these behaviors and beliefs over to tarantulas can be extremely detrimental both to the care of the spiders and how we are perceived as a hobby. It makes us look insane, not like well-read, articulate, and educated individuals who, while we love and respect our tarantulas, recognize their limitations as emotional creatures. Furthermore, many jumping spiders can thrive in pre-made enclosures featuring little witch houses with hard acrylic or resin sculptures that look like little cute dioramas. However, many of these enclosures are not only inappropriate for tarantulas, they are flat-out dangerous. And, as I said before, people who come into tarantulas after having kept jumping or velvet spiders don't necessarily understand that and will attempt to put their new and much larger pets in similar enclosures. I can't tell you how many Facebook posts I've seen with little fish tank sculptures and tarantula enclosures that are wildly inappropriate should the tarantula climb and fall, which is significantly more of a risk for tarantulas than it is for the aforementioned species. That said, I'm glad you're keeping them so that I can appreciate their beauty without having to associate myself with the stereotype of jumping spider velvet spider keepers. So, a a lot to unpack here. Now, I'm sure there's people, I, I read this for, and here, if I'm going to be completely 100% honest at the risk of offending people, I get 100% what she's saying. I always kind of fashion myself as the more intellectual side of spider keeping. And that's not to be elitist. It's just, I've always tried to promote good husbandry, research, constantly trying to explain to people like, hey, don't just go by me, do some research, find out what's out there. And I get that. I I mean, that's what I do too. And I guess some people would disagree with that, but I don't see how I do any differently. But I am very confident in my husbandry and what care info I do give out. So, I mean, I don't know exactly who he's, I guess he, maybe he's talking about like TikTokers. Maybe he's, I don't know who he's talking about. He never really names names. So I, you, there's just like room for speculation. Also recognize that there is an entertainment side to this. And that can, we've gone through, you know, YouTube, for example, the pros and cons of YouTubers. Yes, a lot of them don't know what the heck they're doing. Yes, a lot of them basically put stuff out there that's clickbaity to try to get more viewers because that's what it's about, viewers and making money. Okay, so this is a very uh, recent... Thing I've seen him get more and more loud about this opinion and that's kind of like some where we have some friction I think what what I would like to have a conversation with him about which I think we've briefly talked in DMs about it before but that's loaded and this isn't really related to the velvet spiders and jumping spiders but like I don't know what youtubers he's talking about uh, maybe he's talking about me because people like to like try to insult me and say that my content is just entertainment and it's not informational and this and that. It, there, that there's a better YouTuber out there than me that people should watch. I'm just gonna say there's a lot of different YouTubers out there for different people and there's a lot of YouTubers out there representing different types of keepers, different regions of the world. You know, we have Dave's Little Beasties in the UK. I know that everybody in the UK absolutely loves him and the US, but 
he has a, a very strong base in the UK. We have Peko over in Croatia. He's got a lot of European viewers. Dion, he's up in Canada, so he gets to show us the Canadian side of things. Martin's over in Switzerland. We have Exotic Slayer in Asia, and that's, you know, he's representing a whole region of people, a, a big audience that I don't think I really touch as much as he does. And then, you know, you have me and Richard and Tom Moran over here in the US, as well as a few other people sprinkled in, you know. Now, as for like YouTubers just wanting to like get clicks and make money, Tom Moran's always been very open that he does not want to profit or monetize his platform. You know, this is my dream job. This is what I've I've always wanted to do is to do YouTube and it's really awesome that I've been able to combine two things that I love which is animals and creating things uh, you know I went to art school I'm somebody that always needs to be creating something I get bored really easily like really really easily I always need my mind to be thinking up content I need to be filming editing something I need to have that for my emotional and mental health like and so the fact that I get to do this as like an actual job and support my family off of it like my daughter and everybody I feel very very fortunate and I know he also has recently said something like you know he's not here to sell coffee or this and that and it's like I get it but everything that I've put in this space from plushies to enclosures are things that I personally wanted that just didn't exist yet. So it's not like I've ever put out something that I wasn't like passionate about or that I didn't absolutely love. I guess he sees it differently and that's fine, but I wouldn't villainize other YouTubers. But yeah, we're getting a little off topic. Maybe I should skip around a little bit because I don't really want this to turn into that. However, it's just, I'm trying to get to the velvet spider part. So let's keep going. Sadly, and I think one of the problems that comes up is the, the, the folks that learn from the social media, they see somebody keeping these spiders with all of these little trinkets and things. And there's nothing wrong with, like Charlotte said here, there's nothing wrong with setting up one of these for a jumping spider at least, and perhaps for a velvet spider. And a visually appealing diorama type enclosure because again they're not it's not going to be a death trap when the problem arises is when folks make that transition from I'm keeping it I get a lot of folk a, you'd be amazed at how many people say I got my first tarantula after keeping jumping spiders after keeping velvet spiders and they try to emulate that same care with it and that's where the danger rises. I I absolutely agree with that 100%. Like, you cannot keep a terrestrial tarantula how you would keep a jumping spider. And even an arboreal tarantula, their care is going to be different. And even from species to species to species, there's going to be differences. This just boils down to people not doing their research, which is just a beast that has always existed. I will say, however, I have yet to really come across that. Now, I'm not active really in Facebook groups or forums or stuff like that. I just, there's too much drama and arguing and toxicity and then when the topic of youtubers come up i am out of there i don't want to read anything that's gonna like ruin my day you know but from what i've experienced from my audience from you guys that i've interacted with and and really gotten to know some of you like really well actually. I've gotta say, a lot of you guys are taking amazing care of your jumping spiders and your tarantulas and do almost over research them. I've seen that the jumping spider crowd and the velvet spider crowd are very passionate and very by the books. They want things to be perfect and be really meticulous about how they're caring for these animals. That's just my experience with my audience. I don't know about his, but personally with my audience, I've seen the opposite of that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen though, because again, I don't really participate in like Facebook groups and I don't really go on TikTok much either. I think that bothers a lot of us because that comes down to lack of research. And she mentions in this, and I, did, I just didn't want to read the entire letter, letter, but the second paragraph is about the fact that a lot of, a number of the people getting into the hobby do not do research and rely on others. And sadly, a lot of times it's people they shouldn't be relying on. It's the, the person on TikTok, the random person on TikTok that just picked one of these up, got a bunch of views on it. People are like, oh, this is great. And it wasn't set up right to begin with. Or the social media people, or the YouTubers that are out there just kind of selling stuff and putting stuff out there because it's going to get them views. They're not necessarily the ones you... Who are you talking about? ...you'd like to go to for your husbandry information or recognize that that's a good place to start. I see this. I like this spider. I see how they're keeping it. Let me go out there and do some research and see how other people are keeping theirs. And maybe... 
that is not a, a bad thing to go and and that's what i've always said when it comes to caring for a species look at like five different people's care of it or five different people's enclosures but i will say for the most part when you look at five people's different enclosures you're going to see the same thing dirt hide water food yeah so i mean it's not that complicated which i think he even has a vlog or a video or a podcast about the overcomplication of the hobby and yes i'm a tom moran fan i listen to a lot of his podcasts even when i don't agree i do like him and i do like his content and you should check him out and don't be mean to him and don't yell at him because i don't know if you find out that the majority of people that are actually into the hobby that deal with it in, in an intellectual way where they try to do their research, they take copious amounts of notes, they look up where they live, they talk to other keepers, recognize that they are doing something totally different. And I have seen, it was, when I read this, it struck home. Because A, I don't, as I mentioned before, I'm not on TikTok. I don't go on Facebook very much because a lot of the stuff I would see there would be frustrating for me and I have a hard time keeping my mouth shut. But I have recently, I was on, I jumped on Facebook Facebook for something and I saw some pictures of these enclosures that folks set up for tarantulas and they were so busy and filled with toys and like the exactly what she said with the aquarium decorations there's brightly colored I've seen people build Legos have you ever stepped on a leg every parent out there is is now feeling the sympathy pains of when you've stepped on a jagged Lego it hurts now imagine you have those jagged Lego buildings up there a spider climbs and falls and hits out with his abdomen it's dead I've seen Legos using it. I've seen resin sculptures with pointy flags and things. All these things that are not appropriate for spiders because people, I think, see them online. Because what looks better? I post these up every time I post one of my videos up on YouTube. Somebody will come on and go, I don't understand why your enclosures are so boring. You should check out these. And it's somebody doing like horror dioramas or it's somebody doing Legos or somebody with all this stuff in there. And I have to try to explain to them that, yeah, I understand this YouTuber's doing this or this TikToker's doing this or this Instagrammer's doing this. And it's getting a lot of views but that's not necessarily an appropriate setup for the spider here is why and some of them listen to me and it's that kind of existed before the jumping in velvet spiders like you can't really blame that on the jumping in velvet spiders i feel like i need to be the counter voice to that kind of stuff to go all right i understand where you're coming from however this is how those of us who actually know about these animals keep them i enjoy doing that but it's also frustrating because a lot of folks won't listen a lot of folks will well I, you know this person has this many views been doing it for that long and that's what they base the credibility of that information on how popular the person is and sadly there are a lot of folks out there that do this stuff that are doing it for the right reasons they just aren't as popular because they're not putting that showy stuff out there and that's one of those like exactly what he said is why i get so much hate is because like there was even a reddit thread about me the other day talking about how i don't deserve my platform and talking about how i don't care about my animals fortunately like 90 percent of the thread came to my defense and that they ended up like deleting it but the thing is is like i get so much hate for exactly what he said whether he intends it to come back and hit me or not i do um he is making waves and they're gonna come hit me and other youtubers and he's free to say whatever he wants but does that affect me yes is he playing into this idea that YouTube bad, yes. I don't know how else to put it because again, I do see Tom as a friend and a fellow creator. Saying the wrong people are popular and this and that, I really... So I do get her frustration and the fact that I, I totally get why she's, she's ignoring them because this is kind of why I'm not keeping jumping spiders anymore. There's enough of them out there. People know how to keep them now. I've done my you know thing on them. I don't know if I actually did a husbandry on them. He's saying he doesn't want to get jumping spiders because there's already enough content out there about jumping spiders. And it's like, you can still keep jumping spiders and not make content about them. But also if you have these opinions on their care and stuff, wouldn't you want to put your voice out there more to show people like the proper way that you care for jumping spiders and again i'm not trying to come for you tom i'm just offering a counter perspective here but maybe i will do a husbandry video on them for people who are looking for other information on them but as far as the velvet spiders that's why i shied away from them. they were just it was one of these things that it was this little like viral sensation like oh everybody's got these cute little spiders now the anthropomorphization of them I get that to a degree, and I want to make that very clear because I'm sure there's going to be folks out there that are bristling at this. I do some anthropomorphizing with my animals. I do a lot of anthropomorphizing with my dogs. For example, Billy caught me the other day having a conversation with Penny. He was sitting on the couch. I'm gonna tilt since they try to figure out what. Dad's I'm going to skip just a little bit because I don't want to um, make this video a hundred years long. But 
I think there's a fine line between the harmless anthropomorphizing and the stuff that you see. And again, that's one of the things that kind of turns me off to some of the, the velvet spiders and stuff where they treat them like they're human beings, like to the point where like they're marveling over these things they do and assigning humanistic traits to stuff that's really, it's a spider. At the end of the day, it's a spider. Now, if it's just them talking and doting on it and that's, they don't have any, I know folks that they aren't able to have dogs and cats and those kind of pets and they pour those and that love for animals into these, as long as they're keeping them correctly, I honestly don't care. I've had folks that it really bothers them to see this. Is if I look if the person's calling their spider poofy poo and and they're they've got to you know I, hey we're gonna put a little uh, drape over its house tonight so it can sleep whatever it, they're I don't know whatever weird stuff they're doing as long I don't know about that. Okay, <laughs> I might skip ahead a little bit, but I agree with what he's saying. Some of it's ridiculous. Some of it's over the top, but. Is it harmful? No, in that regard it's not. And I think he does go on to say his only issue with that is when it puts the animal in danger or stresses the animal out, which I'm on the exact same boat. I 100% agree with you on that, Tom. I really dislike the fact that a lot of people who kept jumping spiders first have the idea that you can handle your tarantulas as often or that tarantulas have that same capacity. There's no evidence to say they do, that they don't. But at the end of the day, you know, do you want to hold your tarantula? That's your decision, that's your animal, that's your risks to weigh. But if you're handling your tarantula like every day or even every week, yeah, you're gonna be like probably stressing it out unless it's coming out on its own. But like if your tarantula is in its hide or like in the corner, it, it probably just wants to be left alone. And pulling it out of its burrow or its hide is a big no-no. I would never do that. Any spider I hold or show up on my channel or take pictures of, I'm not digging them out. I never do that. Never do that. And um, I do see people move on from jumping spiders to tarantulas and they do a lot of handling and stuff like that. I personally would advise against that, but at the end of the day, that's your decision and your platform, and I'm not gonna tell you what to do with it. I just will show differently, and I, I worry about my platform. That's the thing, I'm worrying about my platform, my audience, my voice, how I affect things, and how my thoughts and opinions affect things, and that's what I'm looking at, and that's what I'm worried about. I'm just gonna stay in my own lane there, you know? But yes, do I agree with that? Yes. Most of us who are in the hobby treat the, uh, the spiders like fish. And I tr use that analogy all the time. And that's just kind of what I said, so I'm gonna skip a little bit. Let's be real, guys. Without social media and without the YouTubers, the pet tubers that are doing this stuff, with the folks that are on Instagram, Facebook, that has created what the hobby is today in many ways. Bad, there's, you know, there's good and bad with everything. The good news is we have had more people brought into the hobby from these folks. Before this, when I got in the hobby, there was no real internet thing. You didn't find, you just found out because you went to a show and somebody had this weird spider you wanted to keep. Now there's so much out there, we're attracting more people. Now, as for the research part, yeah, and I think sadly it's not going to get any better because as I like to say, people will people. These people see this stuff set up, not necessarily correctly. They emulate these people because they assume if you're on this social media platform and have these followers, it's correct. And they don't necessarily listen to other folks. Does everybody do that? No. And that's where Tom's Big Spider, that's the area Tom's Big Spider thrives because I get those people coming to me going, I used to watch these people. Now I realize there's a whole nother world to this and people keep them totally differently. They're really into them. And those are the people I love to talk to, the ones that Honestly though, like I see what he's saying, but who, like, how is Tom, Tom, how are you keeping your tarantulas totally differently? This is where I want to have a conversation because I'm not really sure how Tom is keeping his tarantulas totally differently than us. Ones that came in because they saw this YouTuber do it and then they got some spiders, they did their research and recognized there's better people to get information out there, there's better ways to get information. I would kind of agree with that to an extent, but also no. I think it comes down to different type of content. So again, I get compared to other YouTubers all the time, or I, somebody will say, this person's content's better, this person's content sucks, you're so much better than this person, or you know, this person did it this way, why aren't you, stuff like that. I think it just boils down to different content creators and people being attracted to what 
they relate to, you know? And if you're interested in more informational content and you wanna seek out a YouTuber or somebody on social media that is more into the science or scientific aspects of it, you know, those people exist for you. We have Martin from Bird Spiders, we have Love Tarantulas, you know, we have that content for you. But if you are into just sitting down and accidentally learning something with me, <laughs> then you're gonna probably have more fun watching my content if you just want, you know, something low key. If you're not interested in the science side, um, and, and that's okay, I don't think there's a problem with that. As long as you're keeping your spiders correctly, then I don't see any sort of issue with not being into that side of the hobby. I, and that's where that boys club kind of comes from, I feel like, but again, that's a whole nother thing. The majority of folks don't know how to do that critical thinking. They don't, they want stuff spoon fed. And this was the other point that Charlotte made that a lot of folks just go out there and they don't do the research. They take information from people. They don't change it. That's going to be a problem as long as the hobby is around. It's not, I, Big agree. mentioned before that when I started Tom's Big Spiders, my hopes was it would be a place at least people could point to and go, there's your good information. And if, if you're not going to do the research, this guy's got the information for it. But the problem is I'm just a small fish in a very, very big pond and I'm not a very loud fish. So a lot of folks get that attention and it's not necessarily the way I would keep them, but that's what they're going to go to. And that's a problem. That's just human nature. I think it's just you disagree with certain things and that's fine. Like you fully can, but like to write those people off because they have different opinions or keep differently. I don't really see why. Like, I, the way I see it is we're all in this together. I don't dislike anybody. Like, I really don't. I like everybody in this space for the most part. There's a couple people I disagree with or I wouldn't do that or I wouldn't make that video or I wouldn't say that, but am I gonna discount them or push them out of the hobby or get angry at them um, and lash out? No, absolutely not because they have their platform to do their things and unless it's something, again, that's like outright putting something in danger. I just really try to stay in my lane these days. In the past, maybe I would have said something and maybe today I'm not staying in my lane. But again, here we are, you know, I, it's, it's been brought up to me several times and yeah. I don't know. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, I don't want this video to be a million years old. I would love to have this conversation on a podcast though. I would love to have a, several conversations on a podcast with him. He's a very interesting person in the hobby. He's contributed a lot to the hobby and he's a really good freaking dude. I really appreciate Tom and everything he's done for us. And he's put a lot of valuable information out there, such as the impaction, you know, issue. What do you guys think? What What is your opinion on the velvet and jumping spider people? Do you see it as like an issue for the hobby? Uh, on my end, I see it as a very big benefit. And I love all the jumping spider and velvet spider people that have kind of come into the space over the past couple of years. I'm not gonna act like I'm their fearless leader or anything, but I did feel like I had to answer to that just a little bit because I have contributed a lot to the velvet and jumping spider space and um, it's one of my favorite animals to keep and and this was not a trend that I hopped on but I don't think it was also a trend I created I mean just look at the way the hobby is thriving now and there's so many like really awesome like businesses that have stemmed off that that exist now we have people on all over Etsy with amazing jumping spider decor. There's so many awesome businesses out there. There's so many creative people in this space and I love to see that as a creator myself. I love to see that creativity and I love the elaborate awesome setups. I wish I had that kind of drive and talent for some of these because they are beyond anything that I've ever done on this channel and that's some of that is what I strive to be. And yeah, that's it. That's all for today. I just I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was a little bit of a talky Thing. I like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're not, and you want to be. Don't forget I have an Instagram video, it's probably way too much, it's at tarantula.cat, you can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon, website, merch, plushies, everything, it's all down, linked below. Check out Tom Moran as well, and I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet picks.